All right, we're starting section 9.1, systems of equations. Okay, so first of all, notice that we jumped all the way to section 9.1, right? That's just because um, this book, we tend to not go all the way through, right? We, we kind of stop around chapter five or so. Well, this topic does belong with college algebra, so we need to go over it, um, although it's not, for some reason, in the same vicinity. Okay, so um, let's just talk about what I mean by system of equations, okay? There's a few ways you can think about it. Uh, first of all, if we assume that every equation has a graph, okay, let's say you have this one here and this one here, right? Well, they're gonna intersect somewhere, most likely. Okay, not all the time, but most of the time, at least for what we're interested in, they're gonna intersect somewhere. And that point, that x comma y, that coordinate point, is the solution to the system. Okay, now usually you don't see it written that way, right? You don't usually see it as a graph, and you're looking at their intersection, and usually what you see is an actual list of points. For example, you may see x plus 4y equals 6, that's your first equation, and x equals negative 3y plus 3 as your second equation. Sometimes you'll see this little symbol here to say they go together. Um, that doesn't matter too much. Okay, so here's our first example. We want to know where these two will intersect. Now, we could graph it, um, but I don't recommend that. That actually gets more complicated as you go. Uh, instead, we're going to use um, one of two methods. All right, we're going to talk about the second method later, but for now we're going to do the substitution method. And the substitution method tends to work um, pretty often. Okay, and so what you're going to do is typically you have to rearrange one of the equations uh, lucky for us, this one down here is, has already been rearranged. We have x by itself. Okay, that would be the goal, to get one of the variables by themselves. All right, I'm going to rewrite these, because ordinarily that's what I would do. Um, but I'm going to write the second one in a different color, because it's easier to track what's going on when I do that. Okay, so x plus 4y equals 6. x equals negative 3y plus 3. All right, so let's just kind of take this to the side here. X plus 4Y equals 6. And right here, we have that X is actually equal to negative 3Y plus 3. They are the same. In other words, you can use them interchangeably. X and negative 3Y plus 3 are the same exact thing. So what I'm going to do is take this X here, and I'm going to replace it with negative 3y plus 3. They're interchangeable. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff. Okay, so I rewrote that first equation, the first equation, and replaced x with what x actually is equal to, an equivalent expression for it. Um, so that's great and all, right? But what is the benefit of that? Okay, well, the benefit is now I'm looking at an equation that has only one type of variable. It's just y, right? Only one variable, y. Before, all of my equations had two, x, y, x, y. Two equations with two variables has now been transformed into one equation with one variable. All right, let's combine like terms. So negative 3y plus 4y is 1y. I'll just put y. Understood one in the front plus 3, right, just bringing that down, plus 3, equals 6. Then subtract 3 from both sides, and y equals 3. Okay, so I found y. Remember what I said, though, I'm looking for a point, I'm looking for an x comma y. All right, well, I have the y value, now I have to find the x. That brings up the third phase here, which would be, now that I know that y has to be 3, Pick one of these equations and plug 3 in for y and solve for x. Now, usually it's easiest to use the one that has x by itself, okay? So that's the one I'm actually going to use here. x, let me go back to being red here, x equals negative 3 times y plus 3. Well, what is y? 
We just decided y is 3. So x equals negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. So if I put these two together, don't put 3 comma negative 6, right? Don't do that. Don't put them in the order that you find, find them. Put them x first and then y. So negative 6 comma 3. That just means that if I graphed these two equations, um, I don't know, something like that, well, they're going to intersect at negative 6 comma 3. But I'm not going to leave that up because that's not necessarily an accurate graph. Okay, so that's the substitution method. Let me kind of recap that real quick. It's called substitution because you figure out an ex expression for one of the variables and you substitute it in in place of one of the variables, right? You substitute it in. It's a substitution method. Okay. Let's do another one. Here we're given 3x plus 5y equals 2 and 2x minus y equals negative 3. Okay, so remember we need to get one of the variables by themselves. And I think that the easiest thing to get by itself is this y right here. Okay, why am I picking that? Well, because it's a negative one in front of it and I don't have to worry about, if I'm trying to solve, I don't have to worry about a number, like a bigger number being in front, right? I don't have a three to deal with or a five or a two. Negative one is pretty easy to deal with. Okay, so I'm gonna off to the side here. This will be my red one. 2x minus y equals negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange that. Okay, so how do I get y by itself? I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And then I'm going to divide every term by negative 1. That leaves me with a positive y equals a positive 2x plus 3. Okay, so there we go. Now let me rewrite these two. We have the top one that I did not rearrange. And we have the new bottom one, y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, I'm going to now ignore all the stuff that I've just done and start working with just this part right here. Remember, I'm going to write out my equation, 3x plus 5y equals 2, and I'm going to replace y with what y is equal to, which is 2x plus 3. Again, if they're equal to each other, you can use them out, you can use them interchangeably. You can substitute in the equivalent form. Okay, so uh, this equation, now I have one equation with one variable, this time the variable is x. Let's solve it. So 3x plus, distribute the 5, uh, 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times 3 is 15 equals 2. Check to see if we have some like terms, which of course we do. 3x plus 10x is 13x. So 13x plus 15 equals 2. Let's subtract 15 from both sides. 2 minus 15 is negative 13. This is working out pretty nice. 13 divide or divide both sides by 13. So x equals negative 13 divided by 13 is negative 1. So we have negative 1 as part of our solution. What about the y value? Again, usually this is going to be your easiest equation to use to find the missing value. So y equals 2 times x plus 3 and we just discovered that x is negative 1. So I'm going to substitute in negative 1 for x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 and negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. So negative 1 comma 1 is where these two lines intersect.
Let's do another one, example three. Two X minus Y is equal to seven. Y equals two X minus five. Okay, well luckily for us, we already have a, a variable by itself. So we don't have to worry about rearranging that bottom one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just rewrite it now as the red one. Y equals two X minus five. Okay, so now, now I can move to the substitution part. So two X minus Y equals seven. And we have decided that Y is the same as two X minus five. This is a negative one that needs to be distributed. So two X negative one times two X is negative two X, negative one times negative five is a positive five equals seven. Oh, two X minus two X will cancel each other out. Five equals seven. Okay, so this is one of those weird ones, right? This is that no solution type deal. Okay, no solution type stuff. Um, well, what does that mean in the context of this problem? First of all, I will say that there is no solution. But why is there no solution? Okay, well, this first one is some sort of a line. And the second one is some sort of a line. Oh, but they run side by side. They're parallel. If they par are parallel, they never cross. If they never cross, then you're not going to find a solution. And that's all there is to that. Let's do one more substitution example. 2x minus y equals 2. 4x plus y equals 3. Okay, so for this one, we're going to have to rearrange one of them. I actually have two pretty good options here, but that bottom one actually will work out a little bit better. Uh, because it's a positive one in front of the y instead of a negative one. Okay, so slightly easier, so I'll deal with that. 4x plus y equals 3. If I subtract 4x from both sides, I end up with y equals negative 4x plus 3. All right, so understood positive. Pushing the wrong buttons again. Positive 3 there. Okay, so let me rewrite them. We have that 2x minus y equals 2 and y equals negative 4x plus 3. Ignoring all the stuff that came before, this is where I'm at in the problem, so that's what I'm going to focus on. 2x minus y equals 2, but instead of y, I will substitute in negative 4x plus 3. Remember, there's an understood negative one here that needs to be distributed. So negative one times negative four X is a positive four X. Negative one times positive three is a negative three. And that equals two. Combine like terms, two X plus four X is six X. Add three to both sides. 2 plus 3 is 5. Divide both sides by 6. We get 5 over 6 as the x. Now let's use this equation to find the y. y equals negative 4 times x plus 3. And we said x is 5 over 6. Okay, remember, think back to what happens whenever you are multiplying a whole number in a fraction. All right, 4 over 6, if I think about 4 over 6, that can be reduced to 2 thirds. So think about it like that. That's actually just a 2 and a 3. Where 2 times 5 is 10, over 3. 
plus three. All right, I gotta find a common denominator here, so I'm gonna need it to be a three. To figure out what goes on top, you just multiply the denominator that you want times the whole number, which is three. Three times three is nine. Nine over three. And think about it, right? Nine divided by three is three. Okay, so put those together. Negative 10 over three plus nine over three is negative one third. So that'd be my Y value. Okay, so that would be the substitution method, okay, four times. Now let's go on to the next method, which actually tends to be everyone's preferred method. Not every time, but most of the time. And that's called the elimination method. Uh, it's sometimes called the addition method. Okay, and we'll do three examples of that. So example five, we have three X plus four Y equals negative two and negative three X minus five Y equals one. Okay, and these are together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this, all right, this particular method is I want to look at adding um, the two equations together, like, like literally adding them together vertically, where I add those together, I add those together, and I add those together to make a new equation. Okay, so with that being said, let's see what happens if I do that. 3x minus 3x is 0. They actually cancel each other out. Let me write it out off to the side here. 3x plus 4y equals negative 2 negative 3x minus 5y equals positive 1. Adding those together. Okay, 3x minus 3x cancels out. 4y minus 5y is negative 1y. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So look what happened to my equation. I'm left with one variable again. Uh, it's y. I need to divide everything by negative 1 to get rid of the negative in front. So y equals divide by negative 1, positive 1. Okay, it's called the elimination method because I eliminated a variable. It's also called the addition method because I, you guessed it, added them together. Okay, so the y value is 1. So what do I do with the x value? How do I find that? Well, just like before, I pick one of those equations. Like, let's say the first one. 3x plus 4y equals negative 2. And since I now know that y is 1, I just plug 1 in for y. 4 times 1 is 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. Divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to negative 2. There's our solution. Okay, so now this one worked out a lot nicer than they ordinarily will. Okay, now this, all this stuff will always happen, right? But it was set up nicely from the beginning. They won't always be set up nicely, but we need to talk about how to get them in the right form. So that's what we're going to do next. The next two examples. Example 6. We have x plus 3y equals 0, 20x minus 15y equals 75. Some big numbers there. These are grouped together. Okay, I have nothing that if I add them together right away will cancel out. Okay, nothing will happen. Um, if I added it together as it stands, I would get 21x minus 12y equals 75. And that doesn't help me. It did not eliminate any variables. So what I need to do is change one of the equations. Okay, and I can do that by just multiplying them. Okay, so I'm looking at maybe canceling out the y's here. You could focus on the x's if you want to, but I'm gonna focus on the y's. I wanna cancel out that negative 
15y by changing this positive 3y into a positive 15y. And so how do I do that? Well, I'm just going to multiply this top by 5. If I multiply that top equation by 5, I get 5x plus 15y equals, well, 0 times 5 is still 0. The bottom I have 20x minus 15y equals 75. Now I'm ready to add them together. 5x plus 20x is 25x. 15y minus 15y cancel out. 0 plus 75 is 75. So see, y canceled out. Now I'm left with 25x equals 75. Divide both sides by 25. 75 divided by 25 is 3, right? There's 3 quarters in 75 cents. Now to find the y, I'm going to plug 3 in to one of those equations. I'm going to pick this one because those numbers are nice and small. So x, which is 3, plus 3y equals 0. Subtract um, 3 from both sides. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Get rid of that 3 in front of the y by dividing both sides by 3, and I get negative 1. So 3 comma negative 1 is the solution to this system of equations. Okay, so again, recap. We wanted to eliminate something. We decided to focus on eliminating the y's. Uh, I thought that looked easiest because all I had to do was multiply the top equation by 5. That gave me a positive 15y. That would cancel with a negative 15y. You could have just as easily decided to focus on canceling out the negative or the x's. To do that, you would have had to multiply by negative 20. You would get negative 20x, you would get negative 60y and 0 again, and then from there the x's would cancel this time, and then you'd be left with solving for y, which would have came out to be negative 1. Okay, so either way it works. You can't really get that part wrong. All right, last example. We have 2x plus 6y equals 7, and 3x plus 9y equals 10. Now here it's not immediately obvious what we should do to cancel out uh, which variable, right? We haven't decided that. And this problem, it's actually not, uh, th there's really, no good way to tell what you should do. So you have to just decide. Do you want to focus on canceling out the x or focus on canceling out the y? And I think it looks maybe a little bit easier to cancel out the x's uh, because those numbers are smaller. And that's really the only reason. Okay, so since um, this is not just an easy one move, multiply the top one by something to cancel it out, I'm going to multiply them both by something. Okay, so I have to be strategic here. If I multiply, let's see, well, if I wanted to cancel out these x's, maybe I can turn them both into 6x, make one positive and one negative. Yeah, I'll make them both 6x, one will be positive, one will be negative. I'll make the top one negative, okay, why not? So I'm going to multiply the top equation by a negative 3. That'll give me a negative 6 here. I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2. That'll give me a positive six, <clears throat> positive 6 here. Those two will cancel each other out. That would be negative 6x minus 18y equals negative 21. And on the bottom, we'd get 6x plus 18y equals 20. Uh-oh, this is going somewhere. I can already tell. I'm going to add these two together. Okay, well, we accomplished our goal of canceling out the x's, but we also just canceled out our y's, so we're actually left with a zero on the left side.
nothing's left there, so put a number zero. Don't leave it blank, put a zero. All right, on the right side, negative 21 plus 20 is negative one. Uh, we're at no solution again. No solution, probably dealing with parallel lines. All right, so there we go. That's section 9.1, systems of equations. Uh, hopefully that was not too, too terrible. Um, give both methods a try. You wanna learn them both because sometimes substitution is easier than elimination and sometimes elimination is easier than substitution. So it's really up to you. All right, anyway, I think that'll do it for, for now.